today we're going to talk about um, something that's been kind of popping up in and out of my life currently. And I want to talk about hypocrisy that is within the religion um, of Christianity and how there is, in fact, a difference between religion and relationship. And I see this as a big point of contention between believers and non-believers. Something that I would like to point out, um, you know, a lot of these televangelists, you know, these these people that you see on TV. Um, first, let's start. Let's start right there. Actually, let's jump right into that. Um, so there's a few that we can talk about, and then we'll talk about um, some individual, I guess, people who profess to be a Christian. Um, however, they do not represent fully what Christianity actually represents. So let's talk a little bit about Joel Olstein. Um, so he's one of these televangelists, right? He's a senior pastor um, and he draws in $70 million a year. Okay. Um, so if you go on his site, the, you know, it, a lot of it's about, you know, prayer where they can, you can get whatever you want um, and kind of treating God as a piggy bank. And God is not a piggy bank. Um, I like to say that God is like a friend that just wants to hear from you, right? So I, I like to use this analogy when I explain it to people sometimes. So it's kind of like this. If you have a friend and you only call that friend when you want something or when things are going badly, but you don't talk to that friend when things are going well, that friend isn't going to want to do anything for you, right? So I, I kind of think of it that way. God is very much like that. If you want to have a relationship with him, you know, he will bless you abundantly and exceedingly. But if you're only praying to him or going to him when... Um, you need something, he's going to turn a deaf ear to you. He's not going to, to give you that thing because you're kind of treating him as a piggy bank, right? Or you're treating him as a convenience store. And that is not okay to do to anybody, right? So it's not something you'd want done to you. Um, so we know that God hates sin. And if you're consistently sinning, um, you know, and you're not turning away from it, he's not going to bless you because you're actually standing in opposition to him. We are asked to use discernment when it comes to hypocrisy, especially um, within the church. It is important to state what the actual church is um, according to scripture and how it should function, and that will dispel a lot of these misconceptions about some of these people who really give Christianity a bad rep and turns a lot of people off from the faith. So let's talk about um, 1 Corinthians 12, where Paul talks about how we all have different spiritual gifts and um, they're all meant to be used in order to what's called edify the church. And in order to edify the church, you're kind of bringing you know, you're kind of holding each other up, right? So you're all considered brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, the church is not an institution, okay? So that's one thing off the bat. When it was adopted uh, by the Roman Catholic Church, it had largely um, gone off in a totally other different direction that is different from scripture. So there's a lot of things within the Roman Catholic Church that are in direct contrast to the Bible. Um, so that is important to understand. Now, when we talk about spiritual, when we talk about what a church is, a church is really supposed to just be uh, a group of people. Um, it could be even two people who are united together in like mind and faith, and they are calling on the Holy Spirit to kind of, you know, give them a message, um, give them something that needs to be revealed uh, to them, and to have communion, right? So to, to be able to communicate with, with God. So what's interesting is um, a lot of what we see today, you know, the pastors, first of all, pastor is not even scriptural. Um, but when we see a pastor, we see a pastor standing up in front of a congregation of a bunch of people and they're all silent and taking notes. And that is not what a church is supposed to be. First Corinthians 12, Paul explains um, that there is to be unity and diversity in the body. So he says, just as a just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ for we 
were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. So again, you know, modern Christianity has one person up there in the front, and it's not this concept of, you know, everybody contributing, right? If you think of the image of the Last Supper, right, that is really an example of what a family communion is supposed to look like. So, you know, it's supposed to be this type of thing where you're giving praise and worship and you're learning together and contributing together as a family and you're communing together, okay, even including breaking bread. Now, it continues, now if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for the re it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. Okay, so again, this concept of within the body, even though there are different parts that have different functions, they are all needed. Now, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you, and the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable what is perceived as being weak is actually a strength um, within the Christian faith. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Okay, so again, it's not a structure so much as it is a community, right? So you need each other in order for it to survive. So in mo modern churches, you really don't see this, right? Now you are the body of Christ, okay? So you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater okay. gifts. This is talking about how God gives each and every one of us special gifts in order to contribute in some way to the church, okay? Now, the purpose of the church is not supposed to be this place where you go in on Sunday and you just clap your hands and sing and dance and it's a big light show. It's not, that is not what church is supposed to be. Church is meant to, again, come together, really seek communion with God, and learn something together in order for you to go out then and preach the gospel. We know that the gospel or the good news is that there is news of the coming of the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so when we talk about the importance of what a church actually is, we need to also talk about the hypocrisy that is taking place within the church. Now, I know that a lot of people are not going to like this message. But it is important to state that the Pharisees did not like Jesus' message either. So when Jesus went into the temples and the synagogues and he got up there and he started actually abolishing um, the structures of religion, a lot of the Pharisees were extremely aggravated with this and worked diligently with Pontius Pilate. The destruction of Jesus Christ. Okay, Now that's important to state because... What we see in America today is not even close to what Christianity is meant to be. So now it's important to state that this is not a religion, okay? Um, this is straight faith, going straight back to the Bible, um, to the teachings of Jesus Christ. So these pastors have completely eradicated um, the teachings of Christ, and, and that is an error, 
okay? And as Christians, we are supposed to hold ourselves accountable, okay? And I don't even like to use the word Christian. I like to use the word believer, okay? Because we believe in this thing that happened that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. So yeah, my push is for you to leave um, these mega churches because they are not uh, doing what they're asked to do. Another one I want to talk about is, um, which a lot of people have been saying, like Joyce Myers, for example, whose net worth is $25 million. Um, again, you know, she is not teaching proper doctrine. She is teaching apostasy. So a lot of these um, preachers are in error. Um, T.D. Jakes, $18 million. Um, so again, this is important to look at as well. And he's been known to hang out with people who deny Christ. So I mean, that in itself um, calls for discernment. None of this is um, scriptural, and the Bible actually calls for discernment. So discernment is the ability to judge well, um, or in Christian context, it is uh, the perception in the absence of judgment uh, with a view to obtaining spiritual direction and understanding. So our spiritual direction and understanding is not supposed to come from, you know, a, a man or a woman who's standing up in front of a congregation of people and the show is about them and not about God um, or Jesus Christ's teachings or really welcoming in the Holy Spirit. There is a level of kind of like supernatural um, ability that is really present in the true church. So scripture even says that it's easier for a camel to fit through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to inherit the kingdom of heaven. So if God is showing us, right, that this wealth, this this abundance of wealth, it, it's actually, we need to have discernment to say like, well, where is that person's heart? Where is that, that pastor's heart that you know, has this mega church and is teaching um, false doctrines, actually. So the Apostle Paul talks about um, apostasy, and um, apostasy has a lot to do with errors that are made within the church. So Second Thessalonians um, talks about the great apostasy. Now, again, something that is important to clarify about the Bible is that people think, oh, you know, this is this was applicable 2,000 years ago. No, it's it's applicable right now. Actually, a lot of what this is written for is when we talk about the last days um, in prophecy, and, and it actually is more applicable today than it probably was 2,000 years ago, okay? So let's talk about the great apostasy. Now, 2 Thessalonians 2 says, Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you, not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter as it for from as it from us as though the day of christ had come let no one deceive you by any means for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first now the falling away is talking about the falling away of these you know false teachings prophets these false churches okay now and the man of sin is revealed the son of perdition that's in reference to uh, the antichrist now um, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called god or that is worshipped so that he sits as god in the temple of god showing himself that he is god again so more um revelation and a lot of that we're seeing in today's world and you can look at some of my other videos where I make some connections to some of the things that are taking place around our world now and how it's fitting in with and it continues do you not remember that when I was still with you I told you these things and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work now the lawlessness is the is lawlessness not of the laws of you know America or Europe or you know man's laws in reference to heavenly laws which really just brings us back to the Ten Commandments okay so lawlessness is already at work only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way and then the lawless one will be revealed 
whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. So like I said, God does not like what's happening in the Christian church because it's turning people away from the truth. Okay, so the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs and lying wonders and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Okay, so this is talking about salvation. So he, Paul is really addressing, you know, these pastors and these churches that that are leading people astray and telling people that, look, all you have to do is say um, one prayer and then you're saved. And that is a complete and total lie. And even in John 3.16, you know, when you talk about translations in the Bible and it says, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who shall ever believe in him shall have everlasting life. Now, it's important to understand that it's not just believe. Um, when we talk about belief, belief actually, when it was written in with it, in the Hebrew roots, um, it meant faith toward God, but that also had a deeper meaning. So it meant faith and repentance as being inseparable. So in affecting a genuine conversion, right? So in order for you to genuinely be convert con converted into a new spirit, um, a spirit in Christ, you not only needed to have faith, but you needed to have it like you needed to completely repent of your sin and these were inseparable you can't just have faith you have to repent and you have to completely turn from your sin and, and walk with and, Christ in an effort to lead a sinless life now you know the whole reason that Jesus Christ came was because he knew that it was really difficult to do that by yourself you can look at some of the old testament prophets um, and they were not able to do this on their own so this was the whole idea of the new covenant the new promise um, by sending Jesus Christ which was God in the form of um, a human being he was able to understand how strong temptation was and the different forms that it came in it was really meant to model so that we may walk the way that he walked um in order to receive this kingdom that is to come right so the only way to overcome death is to do as jesus christ did um including the examples of the apostles so the apostles are you know the 12 disciples these are really examples of the type of faith that people will have the type of struggles the questions that they'll have and the, the you know the people that they're going to encounter along the way so a lot of what scripture is is kind of explaining to you how people are going to interact with you so that's why often when you see um you know another person who claims to be a christian but is not walking with christ you can tell because so it gives you the ability to understand or you know see the hearts of men so we're supposed to look with godly eyes right so this is often taken by non-believers as judgment so it's important to say that the scriptures are is very clear about judgment um you know if you have a log sticking out of your eye but you want to help your brother with a speck in his eye it says first take out the log in your eye so that you may see clearly to help the brother take out the speck in his eye so often this is characterized as judgment and what i found is that it has to do a, a lot with the hypocrisy of people who claim to be Christian, but yet, you know, they go and they gossip, um, or they lie, or they do any of the 23 things which are, um, which actually lead to death in the Bible. What that means is not that you're going to be put to death, but it means that you cannot receive life after death as Jesus Christ did if you don't turn from any of these 23 things now these 23 things um include wickedness greed evil uh envy murder strife deceit uh, malice gossip slander hating god uh, being insolent uh, being arrogant boastful um invents evil disobedient to parents um, not understanding, untrustworthy, unloving, unmerciful, um, knowing God and practicing, you know, evil arts anyway, uh, approving those who, or approving those who practice it. So 
um, yeah, it's, it's important to understand that, you know, these things aren't meant to chastise anybody. However, they are meant to kind of act as a mirror, right? So we can reflect on the things in our lives. And, you know, when we live a more godly life, God does say that we do have righteousness. And the righteousness is that we turned away from these things that are evil and if we are walking with Jesus Christ, then we are able to see more clearly when other people are suffering from some kind of, uh, I guess you can say, infirmity, right? So it is an infirmity or a sickness, um, as it's described within the body. You know, he says that it's better to pluck out your eye than it is to to sin with that eye, right? So because these things that we understand now, they're going to come to pass eventually. And eventually we're going to reach a point in our lives where we get to this point of death and then we can have new life, right? So our, our continuous soul, our soul going on into eternity and in all goodness and all things that are good. But if you continue to walk in the direction um, of evil, you're not going to receive that new life, right? Because the kingdom of heaven is a place of goodness. It's love, it's peace. And regardless of whether, you know, you think your people think that they're a good person or not unfortunately it's not enough right so you know the bible does talk about works um so it talks about how we are supposed to bear good fruit and we're like trees right and we're supposed to bear good fruit and that good fruit is things of you know love kindness gentleness um peace uh self-control modesty like there are a lot of things that show good faith right and it shows um this to other people as well so helping a brother in need you know so a lot of christianity is really actually positive um but people who don't understand it um take it in a whole different direction once you are forgiven of those sins and you turn from your sins things in your life really start to change you know you feel this inner peace right and and it's it, it's almost like everything that maybe you worried about in your life at some point or the other whether it was money um sickness you know it, it maybe you had um you know a child who had a drug addiction you know it's very easy to understand these things and the power that you have as a follower of christ um that heavenly power to pray for that person right because we have to understand that a lot of what's afflicting people isn't you know what we've been told it is a lot of it is these demons that people wrestle with so people say you know oh like demons you know like uh, they're wrestling demons like it's not just a euphemism it's that's an actual truth when you do turn from sin and you know you will be forgiven and you walk in his light and you try to really abstain from sinning you will understand these parables actually better and it's it's not something you can even describe how it happens it just kind of happens um so you have a different understanding about the world and of things right and this is why when you speak to somebody who's a true believer of christ and not a hypocrite um it's it's a totally different experience right you'll see that person doing things that other people aren't you know there's a lot of the homeless population you know and instead of just saying like oh it's such a shame well get out there and do something right like you know a lot of people claim that they're christians but they wouldn't even, they walk right past that person that's sitting there with the change cup. I mean, you know, it's easier to judge that person and say, well, I bet they have a drug addiction or I bet they're, they're an alcoholic. But that is wrong to do because, you know, you have your own cross to bear as well. So even if that is the case, it doesn't mean that you turn away from them. You, you want to help them to be free of that bondage and that slavery, right? So, you know, it's, it's a whole different I guess approach um, and way to life and and really if the world had more of this I you know things would be very different um, but it is important to understand when we talk about um, apostasy uh, you know in 2nd Thessalonians 2 he does say all these things and then he tells us to stand fast so he tells us um, that we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth, to which he called you by our gospel. So when people say, I don't understand that because God says, you know, um, many are called, few are chosen. This isn't like a special group of people. 
you're called to the kingdom or in scriptures they like to use this concept of um, a wedding feast um, you're called to the scriptures or I'm sorry you're called to the to the feast through the gospel you're called to heaven through the gospel and but the the problem is that not everybody is chosen right so not everybody can actually go you go to a wedding and you don't have the proper clothes and you go in, in a you know a t-shirt and a pair of jeans you're not going to be able to join the feast but if you come in proper clothing you would you know, be able to join the feast and and have a great time, right? And the proper clothing is really just a metaphor, you know, for um, a purification of your soul. So it really is a different experience. So, I yeah. often hear that a lot of people talk about being so angry with God. I'm mad at God. I'm mad at God. You know, it's it's important to understand that people are mad at God because they feel like he's not doing anything or why is he letting bad things happen again like I said God will turn a deaf ear to you if you are not following um in the footsteps of his son right if you're not asking God for for direction and guidance and you're kind of just doing your own thing so I like to think of it as like a GPS you know when you're when you go on the GPS and you plug in a destination it's like plugging in the destination of the kingdom of heaven and if jesus christ is your navigator and he tells you just go this direction but then you decide to take a left on cherry street uh make a right go stop at the sunoco and get some gas and then you know you want to go stop at the bar and have some fried pickles it's going to take you a a lot longer to get there and b you may not even get there right so <laughs> it's it's kind of like that we kind of sometimes in our own plans try to go and do our own thing and in doing that um, we often end up getting what's called lost so when we get lost we lose our way um, to getting back to the kingdom of heaven right so you know these are just some things that have really been on my heart um, you know and even uh, talking about you know this idea of what it means to be a follower of Christ and what we are supposed to be doing. You know, we're not supposed to be engaging in petty arguments. We're not supposed to be, you know, uh, showing our works out for everyone to see. Um, and, and it is important for non-believers to understand that when it comes to this concept of judgment, um, we are not, we are not to, it is true, we are not to judge um, others, but that's taken out of context quite often. Because realistically, in the faith, we are supposed to uh, bring each other up because it is very difficult down here. There is a lot of temptation. There is a lot of things, you know, that that grab our attention and and things that become addictions, be it you know drugs or alcohol or uh, you know even the internet, right? Like Facebook, Instagram. These can be drugs, and these things only bring us to our own destruction so when we need to be more careful as christians right in our approach to people and this is something that i have learned recently and everything is a learning um is meant to teach you and if you you know you don't learn from these things you know then you're not following in the holy spirit because the holy spirit is you know he's the good father like god is the good father he's he's meant to teach you truth and teach you and when you're when you're wrong he doesn't like punish you um but rather he teaches you a lesson so that you may not make that mistake again and it actually makes your life a lot easier god is going to judge our hearts when we all they say you yeah, we're all going to meet our maker we're all going to stand before judgment it's not always the things you do um i mean that is important but it really is about the heart where is your heart is your heart for yourself or is it for other people right and that's how we have to kind of balance and check ourselves and really take heed to when somebody you know approaches you in love um to understand that these are just things that are meant to make us better okay um and we can't do that though if we're not walking ourselves right so our walk is very important and if we're not acting in the way that we you know want others to receive us then we can't reach anybody right and so when when we talk about the faith you know not only is it important to 
get back to the foundations, the roots, the teachings of the Bible and come together as a community and come together in love and, and sharing the love that we have for Jesus Christ so that we can show others what that love is really like, okay? Because it is the only thing that is going to bring peace, real true peace and, and not emptiness. Like it, it's it's almost indescribable the, the feeling that you get inside of just pure happiness. It's almost like God ties a little piece of the kingdom of heaven to your soul and it makes walking through this life so much easier when you're not stressing about, you know, bills, you're not stressing about, you know, food or 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 your illnesses because all of those things are really um, you know, not of God. They are of the enemy. Um, and some people think all oh, this is so radical. It's it's not. It's not radical. It's just very different from what people have been taught so please understand that um you know the concept of american christianity of what has been largely um used by the enemy to demonize literally to demonize um the faith and it's only going to be used later on in you know the great persecution but please understand that if this is something that you're questioning or you know whatever i really suggest that you know, going back to the Bible, and if you have a question about something, like I know a lot of people ask, well, why are women depressed in the Bible? And it, that's not true. Um, again, that's a very surface understanding of the translation of the Bible. So, you know, it, really seek somebody um, who has a better understanding of the Bible, or really the best thing that you can do if you want to really see change is pray for wisdom. So a lot of the great prophets and kings and and even queens um, in the Bible talk about like even Queen Esther, right? Um, Ruth, Sarah, there were some really great women in the Bible, Mary, Martha, I mean, even Mary Magdalene, you know? So, so when people talk about women being oppressed or when God says men, you have to understand men, you know, the word was about men, about mankind, doesn't necessarily mean that it's gender specific it's trust in Yahweh with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding that's Proverbs 3 5 just have trust okay it's hard for us to trust it's hard for us to have faith because we've seen what this world has become but understand that this world is going to come to pass I, I like to explain it as what we're currently going through right now is kind of like a test because mankind is not good inherently. Mankind is, I mean, sometimes I'm sure people have good intentions, but at the end of the day, we're not good, right? Like nobody walking this earth is perfect, um, myself included. And, you know, again, it's like Proverbs twenty eight twenty six. he that trusts in his own heart is a fool, okay? Because your heart's gonna, when your heart isn't in the right place, it's gonna lie to you. You know, it's gonna, your, your head's gonna lie to you. Your head's gonna tell you, you know, you're perceiving something the way that you're not, it's not even meant to be perceived only to create confusion, right? And none of that is of God. So, understand that you know faith is important in the way that it operates you know we have to in our way be righteous in God but righteous in such a way that it's like you're not you know pointing fingers so much as you have to understand you're telling these telling people that what what is chaining them down right like what is keeping them from reaching this spiritual rebirth or freedom that we as true followers of Christ are meant to actually um, to have. So if you are walking around and you're miserable, then you're not walking in, in Christ's love. You're not at all. Then there's something in your life that needs to change, that needs to be different because, you know, that is not what God intended, right? If you're walking with God, yes, things are going to be tough. There are people, you know, are going to remove themselves from you because they don't understand. But that doesn't mean that you treat them badly. It means, you know, you try again, you receive them in love, pray for them, right? Because they don't understand. So we have to be, you know, examples. And don't, don't bicker, don't fight, don't argue about it. You know, you just have to just show them the love that you feel that you should feel inside. If you don't feel anything inside, that is called spiritual death. It's not the same as fleshly death. Um, when you go into a grave, it's spiritual death. See, we were never meant to feel like automatons, you know, constantly walking around and and not even knowing, you know, I like to say our butt from our elbow, right? Like, you know, that is not what we were meant to ever be. We were really meant to just 
you know, to be these joyful, happy, abundant creatures. Living in New York City, I saw this everywhere. Was, everybody's just on autopilot, you know? There's no joy, there's no happiness, there's no love, no true love. Everyone's just consistently running around chasing something. And this is not how we were intended to live. And believe it or not, um, you know, again, lean not on your own understanding, but you don't have to live that way. So I pray that we can fix this error within the mega church, within the church, within Christianity, as um, and, and move away from this title of religion and bring it back to what it is, right? The faith, the truth, um, this, this, this understanding of love, okay? Uh, so I thank you for listening and I thank you um, for being with me on this journey as I'm learning as well. You know, we're not, we're not perfect, um, but if we let the Holy Spirit guide us, we will not go wrong. So please go forth, brothers and sisters and unbelievers alike, um, in faith, in love. And if um, you see something that is an error to what is the teaching of the Bible, then don't be afraid to hold each other accountable because that's the only way that people are going to know what this true peace and true uh, faith is. Okay, thank you and God bless.